Hi guys, welcome back to Miss Morgan's Read Alouds. Today we'll be reading The Mitten by Alvin Treslett. Um, and it's illustrated by Yaroslava. Do you see that down there in the corner? So from looking at this front cover, what do you think might happen? If you look closely, there's something in this corner right here on the branch that seems to be kind of broken. Hmm. And another thing about books that's nice to know, if you look at the back, it might give you some extra clues as to what you might read about. So let's get started. The Mitten. It was the coldest day of the winter and a little boy was trudging through the forest, gathering firewood for his grandmother. Bring back all you can find, the old woman had said, as she had sat knitting a pair of mittens. The north wind blows cold, and we must have a good fire to keep us warm. Have any of you guys ever heard of the word trudging? I'm going to give you guys a couple of seconds, get out a paper and a pencil, and write down what you think that might mean. And go ahead and use all the context clues that you have. So you have the word trudging through the forest, gathering firewood, North wind blows cold. So go ahead and write it down. Okay, now that you have something written down, I'm gonna keep going. All morning the boy worked, picking up sticks until his sled was well loaded. Then a very strange thing happened. Just as he picked up the last stick, he dropped one of his mittens in the snow. Now, how a boy could do this on the coldest day of winter, I'll never know. But that's the way my grandfather tells the story. Off he went with his load of wood, and the mitten was left lying on a snowdrift. Do any of your guys' family members have any old stories that they tell you sometimes? As soon as he was out of sight, a little mouse came scurrying through the woods. She was very cold, and when she spied the little boy's mitten, with its further, feathery fur cuff, it was a tongue twister, she popped right in to get warm. It was just the right size for a tiny mouse. Here's the picture. Presently, a green frog came hip hopping over the snow. Anybody home? She asked when she saw the mitten. Only me, said the mouse, and come in quickly before you freeze. They had no sooner settled themselves snugly in the red wool lining when an owl flew down. May I join you in that lovely mitten, he asked. If you mind your manners, replied the mouse, for, always, for owls had always made her nervous. And don't wiggle around too much, added the frog, because it's a bit tight in here. Why do you think the owl might have made the mouse nervous? It wasn't long before a rabbit came down the forest path. Is there room for me in that nice warm mitten? Asked the rabbit. It's awfully cold out here. Not much space left, said the mouse and the frog and the owl. But come on in, we'll see what we can do. And I apologize guys for the stifling and the coughing. I have a little bit of a cold. I must have dropped one of my mittens in the snow. Even before the rabbit had gotten herself tucked in, a fox trotted up to the mitten, and after a great deal of trouble, she got herself along with the others. The mouse was beginning to think maybe she shouldn't have been so generous, but with the bitter wind outside, what else could she do? Do you think it was kind of the mouse to share and not just be selfish? Would you have done the same? And now, as if things weren't bad enough, the next visitor was a big gray wolf, and he wanted to come in too. I don't know how we'll manage, said the mouse, but we'll try. Everyone moved around a bit, and finally the wolf was squeezed into the mitten. It was very crowded by now, but at least it was warm. Things had just gotten arranged nicely when the animals heard a great snorting. It was a wild boar. 
and he was very anxious to get out of the wind. Oh dear, cried the mouse, for the men was already beginning to stretch. We just don't have any more room. I'll be very careful, said the boar. With that, he squinched himself into the man, along with the mouse and the frog, the owl, the rabbit, the fox, and the wolf. I know this so because my grandfather told me. But the worst was yet to come, for who should appear now but a bear? He was very big and very cold. No room, no room, cried the animals before the bear even had a chance to speak. Nonsense, said the bear. There's always room for one more. And without so much as a please or a thank you, he began crawling into the mitten. He put his paw in first, and the mitten creaked and groaned. He put his other paw in, and one of the seams popped. Then he took a big breath and pushed himself in. Now while all of this was going on, along came a little black cricket. She was very old, and her creaky legs ached with the cold. When she saw the mitten, she said to herself, now that looks like a nice warm place. I'll just hop over there and see if they'll let me squeeze in too. And there she is right there in the little corner. And there's the mitten busting at the seams. But ah, uh, that's all that was needed to finish off the poor old mitten. The cricket had no more than one foot inside when with a rip and a snap, the stitches came apart, the old leather had cracked, and the soft red lining split in half, popping all the animals into the snow. Well, at this very moment, the little boy discovered that he had only one mitten, so back he went to see where he might have dropped the other one, but all he could find were the ripped apart pieces, and he thought he saw, he thought he saw a little mouse scurrying away with a bit of red wool perched on her head. It looked very much like the lining from the thumb of his missing mitten. Oh well, said the boy as he snuggled his cold hand inside his coat. My grandmother will surely have a way to fix my new mittens. Then he hurried home with the north wind nipping at his cheeks. <laughs> and my grandmother says he never really found out what happened to his mittens. And there's the boy. After reading this book, do you guys think that it was kind of the mouse? Or do you think that the mouse made a mistake by letting them share the mitten? If it was you who had to make that decision, would you have kept it to yourself and been warm by yourself? Or would you have allowed everybody else to come in and enjoy the warmth too? I hope you guys enjoyed the reading of The Mitten. I'll be back with more.